Well, she's one of the greatest MCs that I know. Energetic, flowetic, and just simply amazing. The guy is a talent at its true form, and he just does it with such a bravado, no fear. You want to do exactly what he asks you to do on that microphone. I mean, I've been doing this for 28 years now. I just know that, yo, I'm happy. So it's kind of hard for me to not put out happiness. But I reap happiness because of that. And I see how it just, it just turns over. I don't consume my music, man. I'm really consuming my music. The DJing as a kid, he, he always took to when my dad, my dad would DJ our family parties. So that was early like understanding of DJing, which is watching my dad or listening to my dad play music. I often wondered, I said, did you go to school to entertain everybody, or did you go to school to learn? And he did both. He did very well in school, but he was also the entertainer. He started emceeing about 18, 19, when he started in Black Chinese. Everything kind of like connected and connected and took off for him. We started traveling worldwide, DJing and emceeing. His musical history has always included him being on the microphone and everybody listening to his voice. Well, she met him on Black Chinese Sound. Uh, me and him used to tour in the early days and we had, we had to work hard. Growing up in Miami, you're getting the influence of different genres of music, the hip hop, the freestyle, the house music, you know, and we grew up with reggae and dance hall and we just fused all of them together, you know, so putting it together was natural for us. So we weren't trying to create something different. We we're just like, this is, a, this is what we do. Let's just do it. What I do is an influence of half Jamaican sound system culture and half Miami based culture. It's the two. The approach can be a little different. And so on the Jamaican culture side, it's very um, news of the streets kind of thing, you know, very, this is how we rebel. And in Miami side, it's much more party, party, party. It's like fun, 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 fun. And so there's both of that, right? It's one, you want to have something that's conscious and meaningful. And then on the other side, you want people to dance and have a good time. And so being able to blend both of those, I think is what influences almost pretty much everything. I do. Jamaican sound system culture, I think, is the catalyst for like a global movement. You have all of these sound systems that were becoming extremely popular. The legend of those things started to go outside of Kingston. There's been tons of other countries that look to Jamaica as the godfather of this thing. I grew up in the golden era of dancehall, so the late 80s. You know, Shaba, Papa San, Beanie and Bounty just starting, Supercat. That's what I would consider the golden era of dancehall. I grew up in the middle of Kingston. I was able to see these artists perform because all these clubs and venues in Halfway Tree just shook where I lived. It was extremely sculpting, you know. I understood energy and vibration and I learned that very young. It lives with you for life. That impact for sure brought me into music. Everybody 
from out of town, put your hands in here. Well, it don't be right that everybody in here that's actually from Florida show you how to dance right now. Let's go! There is a conversation that's taking place between the DJ and the audience, creating a kind of opportunity for consecrating the space and seeing the dance hall space as a spiritual space. Music was still connecting us. Music was our bridge to the places we had left. In Miami, you get Jamaican culture, Central, South, American culture, Caribbean culture. Then you get Black American culture, White American culture, all mixed into this pot. And so you end up finding that you have a very unique perspective on the world. We are in Brazil, we're in Sao Paulo, we're working on my album called Walchino. I didn't have to fly here. We can work remotely, but there's nothing like being in the studio with somebody and actually having your input and actually creating together and actually becoming friends as well. I'm not, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm shocked, man. Man, I never heard this before, man. Not from Brazil. Not from Brazil? Yeah, not from Brazil, man. This is kind of fire, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm really shocked. We learn a lot. Definitely. Yo, really With you guys. The way I make songs, there really is no set formula or plan. It could start with a melody, it could start with a beat, it could start with the words. It happens in every single way. But for the most part, you make a beat first. Like maybe you just keep going up. Let's try it. Let's try. It's not bad, you know. You know what, maybe? Could you not crack the vo the note and just give it one long one? Or, straight one. Yeah, a straight one without without the uh, influx, the fluxing. Okay. Yeah, just see if you can go straight for as long as you can. That sounded good. He just knows when to say the right things, do the right things. The whole crowd's of 100,000 people on a stage. I didn't mean to get so emotional. He's just a worldwide figure, in my opinion, beyond the Caribbean type. I'll never stop doing what I love and making sure that I do it to the best of my ability every single day. It's never going to stop. Sayard Monty, 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 Sayard